Thanks. Um, yeah, I think it's an important uh, issue. Um, the unfortunate reality is that the green transport targets for 2020 have served to incentivize damaging technology, uh, in particular in land-based uh, biofuels. Um, if you read the Member States' uh, National Renewable Energy Action Plans, which outline their way to meet the 10% of transport uh, target, um, it's clear that but for all the member states, I think a majority aim to do it through uh, biofuels, of which land-based uh, biofuels is a significant uh, percentage. And the plans would mean a very significant increase of global use, global land use for biofuels and greenhouse gas emissions. I think it was a study done for the Commission in 2011, concluded that up to two-thirds or more of the attributed gains to switching to biofuels in terms of reduction of greenhouse gases would then be wiped out in turn by the impact in terms of direct land use change and indirect uh, land use change. So it's a serious issue and needs to be uh, tackled. Um, I think the Commission's proposal goes some way to tackling it, but I would say it's insufficient and could go further. Um, I have a question for the Commission as to why, why they didn't add uh, indirect land use changes uh, into the sustainability criteria as a very direct way of dealing with this problem. Um, secondly, while I would welcome the cap of 5% of the 10% um, in terms of transport, um, should it not go further than that in the sense of an absolute cap on the amount of, uh, the amount of land usage in terms of biofuels, uh, but also a target of moving towards zero uh, Bi land-based biofuels by 2020 or whatever. And then finally, a question relating to international trade. Um, how does the Commission intend to ensure compliance of biofuels with the sustainability criteria laid out in the EU directives? Uh, can you just rely on the self-reporting of economic operators or, or how exactly does the Commission propose to do it? Thanks.